One of the reasons why some of my photos miss critical focus has to do with a combination of issues. The first is that I'm hand holding my camera when I ideally should be using a tripod, but that's not always ideal or possible or feasible. But the issue that comes with hand holding also has to do with not using an ideal shutter speed or a shutter speed that's really fast enough. So let's take a look at this photo specifically. I'll bring up the info here and you can see that I took this with the Sony a7R Mark II and the Zeiss Bodice uh, 18 millimeter f2.8. And as is mostly the case when I'm photographing, I usually will open my lenses aperture as wide as possible, especially when I'm doing street photography. And even though I bumped up my ISO to 1250, I still had my shutter speed at 1 50th of a second, which arguably is a bit too slow. You really do want to kind of push it to 1 1 25th, 1 2 50th, or even faster if you can. And so let's zoom in here and you can see that uh, we just missed focus. Like even though I was focusing on this bread maker, he's not sharp as you can see. Uh, and if we go to develop, let's go ahead here. I'm going to show you the original photo. Uh, without any edits. And so even at 1 50th of a second, the reason why I had it at that shutter speed was I was trying to let in as much light as possible because he really was in this dark area over here. So it was hard to expose for him. And this was what I was able to do with some minor editing. You can see here that we have no sharpening applied, um, nor do we have any uh, clarity or texture. This is just color and tone correction. Despite that, again, I was hand-holding. This was in a very, very narrow corridor in Morocco. And um, even though I had my focus on the bread maker, as you can see, it's just not there. Same thing with the surrounding area on the plane of focus that he's on. You can see that we just kind of missed some of that focus. And so before we use Sharpen AI, let's take a look at how Lightroom can sharpen this photo. So let's zoom in on our bread maker over here. We can try clarity and you can see clarity just starts to break the photo apart really quickly. Um, same thing with texture, uh, just doesn't look very good. We're not actually getting more detail restored. Uh, in fact, we're just getting more noise and artifacts. And then also with sharpening, if we kind of start adding that, it doesn't look like it's getting any sharper. All I'm seeing are these weird crispy artifacts. So um, let's bring that to zero here. We'll zoom out and then we'll send this photo to Sharpen AI just by right clicking, going to edit in and then selecting Topaz Sharpen AI. As for the file format, let's just stick with JPEG and we'll go to 72 uh, PPI for resolution. And then let's click edit to start working. Now that we're in Sharpen AI, the very first thing I do whenever I start working on a photo is change my view to comparison view because I wanna see a uh, three up view here of the three different AI models that are being processed on the image. The other thing I'm also gonna do is change my zoom to 100. Actually, let's go to 200 here and put the focus box on the bread maker's head. So what I'm gonna do here is, I think motion blur might give us good results. We have motion blur normal selected here and right off the bat, I don't like the results here, but let's see what very noisy does. That does actually a really nice job of restoring some of that detail while getting rid of the noise around the face. We can also try very blurry just to be sure. And that does a pretty good job too. Um, but I think I like, I actually like very blurry more. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is reduce the suppressed noise slider a bit and increase the remove blur slider. Then let's go ahead here, let's change our view to a side-by-side -side view. And you can just see all that detail in the shirt. The graphic on the shirt looks great. Let's also check out some of this area here that I noticed earlier. That detail has been brought out around this frame over here uh, and the detail in the rock. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is uh, zoom to fit and then change my view to the single view. And now if I click and hold, I can see the original and you can see how soft everything is, especially when you see the Sharpen results, everything just looks like it snaps into place. It's a pretty cool effect, just toggling original and then the Sharpen AI version. And so with that, I'm gonna click apply to return back to Adobe Lightroom. And so here we are in Lightroom and you can see this is the original photo. This is the edited photo using Sharpen AI. We have some really nice detail that was restored in our bread maker as well as all of the other areas that have natural detail like uh, 
this wall here, this uh, stone wall obviously has texture that we were able to restore. And it's just fun kind of zooming in and seeing all of the detail that is restored that otherwise would have been lost with the original photo. And so to recap, one of the more common issues that I have with getting critical focus has to do with one, hand holding my camera as opposed to using a tripod, which would give me a lot more stability. But I understand that that is not always feasible. And then two, not using an ideal shutter speed that's fast enough. Again, this was 1 50th of a second, which if this were a more ideal situation, I probably would have used 1 2 50th of a second. I also would have probably not used a wide open aperture of f2.8. I might have tried for an f4 or an f5.6, which would have probably helped by not having such a shallow depth of field. Despite that, I was able to use Sharpen AI to recover all those details and get a really great photo that I'm excited to share.